Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Zareta and today I am bringing to you a unboxing video, more like unwrapping video. I purchased some material for my laser cutter. Uh, if you don't know, I have the Flux BMO 30 watt laser cutting machine. There are a lot of companies you can purchase from to get acrylic material. I chose this specific company because of where um, I'm located. They're like maybe two states away from me. So I knew I wouldn't have an issue with getting shipment to me fast. So here we go. As you can see, this box is fairly protected, which is what you want because acrylic is so um, fragile. So whoever you purchase from, just make sure they're boxing your material up well. So that way you don't have to wait for them to send you new material if it's damaged on the way to you. Okay, I knew I saw a receipt. Okay, this is Canal Plastics. So this is my first time ordering from them, but I've used their acrylic before. The person that I purchased my BMO from was already using their material. So I can vouch to the quality of their acrylic. I'm gonna peel back a few of these covers. This will really be good too for Anyone who is wanted to who already uses acrylic and wants to branch out into new colors or um, if you don't use acrylic yet and you're thinking about it, this will kind of give you an idea of what exactly you are looking at. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with the clear. This is the one eighth clear acrylic. Now, one thing you really want to look for when you're purchasing acrylic is that making sure that it's cast acrylic. I know some people are going to purchase from Amazon, maybe China, different websites like that. And you just want to make sure that your material is cast. Something about it being cast allows it to cut the way you need it to on your laser. This is the clear That's the thickness of it. Primarily use this for examples. I've used it for um, making silicone molds. And you can also use it, a lot of people use this for ornaments um, or different signs where they'll cut, engrave on the front and then paint on the back. Clear is, when you first think of it, you probably would be like, what am I going to do with clear? But the, the possibilities are truly endless and the cost is very <laughs> reasonable. So definitely don't, don't count the clear out if you have never thought to consider it. So next we have the mirror blue. This is going to be used more as a cutout. I don't really plan to engrave the blue. But that's it. Oh, it's so funny. You can see my reflection, but let's see. I want to make sure you can see like the reflection and sparkle of it. But this is the this is the front, and I'm gonna show you the back. So for those who haven't used mirror acrylic, the back is a completely different color. It's like a coating like a gray coating so if you decide to engrave any acrylic like i'm going to show you the mirror acrylics is what i primarily engrave i always cover mine up i never send anyone uh, anything with just the back like this now because it is um just a plain gray 
a nice clean gray you can if that's your choice if that's how you like it if that's how your customers like it then you definitely can um, it's just not my preference to send out um, items like that so I always cover them up and also in some of my later videos you're gonna see different techniques that I use that um, show why it's important for me to cover it up I personally don't like the way some of these colors engraved this is the red mirror and I engraved it with the design I'm working on <laughs> and you'll also see th these two are from I painted the back um, trying to find different ways to make the color pop more and it's just not that vibrant so for me personally I won't really be um, uh, engraving that much colorful acrylic like the blues reds um, the deeper colors okay so that's the blue this is the opaque now one thing you're going to notice when you're purchasing just color cast no mirror just the color there's opaque and there's transparent transparent means that exactly what it sounds like you're going to be able to see through it and that's fine for some designs but some designs you don't want that um, like I can see transparent being good for jewelry um, different things like that but if you're making um, what's something I know for me at one point I was making garden garden stakes and I started I ordered a whole bunch of transparent acrylic and it was not ideal because when you placed it in the plant the light like reflected through it and made it hard to read what the exact plant was so this is the dark blue opaque so oh, here we go so as I'm peeling it back you can kind of see if you look really closely you can kind of see um, the difference in the light but it's not like see-through like transparent would be this is just because I have a light shining directly on it but the color is really rich it's very nice I hope I didn't peel too much of that back <laughs> Okay, it's laying back down, it's fine. So that's the blue. Then we have white. I use it a lot to complement a lot of designs. Then if I peel the back, Same thing you can see me peeling it like the lightness from the darkness but it's not see-through you can't see my hand you can just see like a shadow I'm gonna come back to the glitter this is the black opaque which I'll be using a lot for a project I have coming up Another thing I wanted to mention is all of the acrylics that I purchased are gloss. And that's another reason too why you can see the reflection when I'm like holding the light over it. When you're looking at it, these are the gloss colors. And typically companies will offer the white and black in a matte option. So I tried the white matte. I do like it. But also it really doesn't make that that much of a difference for the different projects I'm working on. But um, it will make a difference in picture taking of your projects. You won't have to worry about so much reflection. But it really depends on the look you're going for. So this is the gold mirror. And again, excuse <laughs> seeing me in the background. But it's when it says mirror, they truly mean that. There's a genuine reflection on here. I'm trying to find the best way for you to be able to truly see the color. I think that this me try to Okay. So 
That's the gold. You have rose gold. So beautiful. And the last is the glitter. These, like I said, are the more costly items. So you really want to be intentional about how you're using this. Um, I've also um, been reading that this is a little bit thicker um, and a little more challenging to cut through. I have never uh, attempted to cut through glitter, even when I had my last machine. So this will be a first for me. Let's see. I'm going to peel off a little bit. Because right now it has a kind of like a matte look to it. With the film. Oh. And once you peel it back, that's gorgeous. That is really beautiful. So don't be fooled when your acrylic comes in. If you order glare. This is freaking gorgeous once you peel that um, the protectant sheet off and if you don't know do not peel off the protectant sheet until you cut you do not want to cut your acrylic without that protectant sheet on there and then I'll show you the gold and that'll be it until I order more colors So pretty. It's really beautiful. So, um, I will make sure to do a video on tweaking to find the ideal settings for this glitter. I will say that if I not if but when I do use this for projects, nine times out of ten, this will be like the highlight of a project. Like if it's an ornament, the, this will not be serve as the background. Another acrylic, like maybe the black, will serve as the background, and this will be more like an accent piece on it because it costs so much. You really want to make this stretch. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what the material looks like on the BMO. Um, as a 6x12 and also I will share a tip with you guys um, on how I elevate my material to keep it from um, getting any backlash burn marks um, from the honeycomb tray. So I'm going to show you first what it looks like just laying flat on the board. So there's a little bit of overlap on the sides. But this is actually good because for those who cut acrylic or cut a lot of wood, you'll know that you always can't line everything right up to the edge. A lot of times you'll end up lining things. So if your design starts here, I know I give myself some leeway um, a little bit away from the edge just in case my alignment is off or anything. So. I believe that this 12 inch size is perfect of course if someone is offering 11.75 you're probably still fine but I really do like the extra space you have on the sides because a lot of times that space you um, couldn't use anyway so I said I was going to share my little secret on how I keep my acrylic material from getting charred on the honeycomb tray and if you don't know what that means, I don't have an example right now, but what will happen is the edges of your acrylic on your design will have, um, like it gets flashback from the honeycomb as the laser beam hits the honeycomb and you'll get little dents and chips, burn marks on your material. So I have these T-pins that I cut with some extra acrylic. Someone in one of the Facebook groups was kind enough to share the file. Um, I am not going to share the file because it's not mine. 
but I will put in the link below which Facebook group I got it from and um, how you can what you can search in the in what you can search in the box to find these honeycomb pins. So at first they did seem a little big when I first cut them out. I was like, there's no way that these honeycombs pins are going to fit in my tray and it's the perfect size. So what I'll do is I'll just lay them out, spread them out, usually wherever it slides in easiest. Since it's just this little sheet, I am okay with just having four, but sometimes I will put um, maybe one in the middle to kind of help support it. And depending on if it's like a sheet that I've already been cutting out of, I'll just move the pins to support the parts that are still uncut. So what you can see here is that it's elevated. Let me it is elevated from the tray so when you're cutting whatever you're cutting once it does that second cut that makes the material <laughs> drop fully release from the sheet it's gonna fall onto the tray but that's also helpful because if you are working on a design and you want to make sure that your material is fully cut before you move it, you'll know because it hasn't dropped through the uplifted acrylic sheet yet. So I usually place mine about the middle. That's just my preference right now. I like to start from the middle and then I'll work that way. I will say if you are working on an intricate design where your pieces, you are going to be gluing them back on or you're cutting out a lot of pieces you'll have to put back together, this might not be the method for that, but this is great for like if you're cutting out ornaments, um, you know, larger pieces. Like here, there's the ornament cut out, um, a square cut out, a name cut out. Those would be great because when it drops, you don't have little pieces you're trying to pick up and, and get back together. So I'm gonna be testing a different method for those more intricate cuts because there are some designs I have that I want um, to cut on the acrylic, especially like the colorful acrylic because I don't like the way it typically engraves. Um, I'm gonna be working on something where you're placing a sacrificial piece underneath and I will create a video for that. So that way you all can see how that works. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Once again, this was just a quick little run through of some material that I purchased, where I purchased it from, and how it fits onto the Flex Bemo. Um, if you have any questions about material, let me know. If there are specific videos, tutorials you would like to see going over cutting different materials, cutting different acrylics, different designs, let me know. I am here to create this content that is very much missing from YouTube. Um, so just let me know in the comments what you would like to see so I can make it happen. And if you enjoyed this video, please like. I know it's pretty early, but you stayed throughout the whole video. So if you want to see more, please subscribe. Um, thank you all and see you next time.